hundred percent. I think Speaks that's volumes. all we need. Every human being just needs yeah. a purpose, a meaning to why you get up every day, jumping yeah. to do something. And there's a thing that's really important to us, I think, as human beings, to give back. Mm -hmm. We do have this thing of giving back because that's our next generation. Mm -hmm. It's the whole passing on the baton so somebody else can carry it for us for the next generation. And I think for us, it becomes a daily thing. And the more we teach people that, one of the things we live by in, in Street Factory of this culture of teach to teach is the ripple effect. Yeah. So everything I give you, the love, the respect, the kindness, I need you to give that to somebody tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So with regards to obviously all that sort of stuff, financially going through that, have you gone, on for, gone through some like really hard times yourself <laughs> that sort of thing because obviously yes, you've give back so much mm. but it doesn't scream to me that that would have been easy financially and again that's a massive barrier for a lot of people it would Huge. be a massive barrier for me Huge. probably yourself mm. like i would definitely like to give back more and i would like to do those sorts of things yeah. but i've got a family i've got a mortgage, yes i've got all those types of things and yeah. really that comes first so you know from from outside looking in it, it clearly sees that you've maybe put those financial stuff early on on the back burner to be able we to did. get to where you are now yeah 100 percent. at the beginning it was really hard for the first 14 years me and my wife literally funded the entire thing at the beginning 14 years 14 years That's it's 18 bad. years in now but so the first 14 so years so 14 years to get to a point 14 years where we are now where we can actually make money but now what happened was street factory became my charity that I give back in my organization when we invest so still to just recently, I would be at the building working for free. I don't get paid for working on Street Factory. And everyone that works with me, except the, the young teachers and stuff I'm training next, they would get paid. I wouldn't. So if I booked workshops and stuff like that, anyone that turned up to the workshop, I'll make sure they got paid. I didn't get paid because to me it was the way of giving back. And we couldn't afford to pay me to be there. So I would do my work for free. So I would turn up, I'll clean the place, set the place up, run the workshop, tidy it up again, ready for tomorrow. Now, through my other work, so this was my street factory where everything I did in the building. I did a lot of work as Toby G where I would do classes and schools and colleges and workshops and deliver equality and diversity inclusion training. And I would just travel all over the country doing this stuff. And all the money I'll make, 50% of my money always went back to street factory. So we invested everything we had back into street factory. So long as we, and we didn't have much, but we got by. And we paid the bills and we had a little bit. But this year kind of became one thing, became a family. So I couldn't let Josh down. I couldn't let Max down. I couldn't let all the kids down. So if we, there were many a times where we sat down, me and my wife, and went, we just, we can't. You think we're, we're in debt. Was, we were just be somewhere where you could get like some really good like funding or sponsorship. Because what you're doing is effectively getting kids off the street. I, I always think well, even with my son, like there's not enough for him to do like I take him to sports clubs football and yes. jiu-jitsu and stuff like that but again if you couldn't afford to do that you know for him to go football every month is 30 pounds yes. a month without travel there and yes. back some games are in Launceston some games yes. you know 20 30 40 minutes away yeah um even at his age I always think you know if once if once if I physically couldn't afford that and then what is there for him to do other than sit at home and even plays Xbox, but even if they couldn't afford an Xbox, you know, yes. there's all those things. Then it's the internet. <laughs> exactly. then, then it's the yeah. key it's the for the Xbox to be able to go and play against other people. Mm -hmm. It's all these things. So when we, when we started Street Factory, the only reason we did it was because in my local community, we started in a local church. We started, I wanted to get back, I wanted to do something. I thought, why not do something? And there was a bit of trouble in the area. So I thought, let's do something. So we did. So we opened the church. We, we rented a church hall. We had to pay for it. There was no support or anything from nobody. So me and my wife decided to set it up in our local area. And then first day, we had three kids. Second day, 10. Um, second or third week, then we have 20. Fourth week, there was 100. 100 children. 100 children. Suddenly, the noise got around. And that's all for free, though. Like all for free. So me and my wife funded everything. That. So we paid for the space. <laughs> Uh, we even then started providing little bits of food for children that we knew needed it. We would provide drinks, clothes. Uh, we had kids who turned up and they didn't have trainers or had holes in trainers. So mate, that's quite truly, I think we speak for both of us, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So we did a lot of amazing things. And one of the things is I know what it feels like. I was poor. I didn't have nothing. People gave me stuff. So I know the feeling and I know the importance of never embarrassing a human being. That's something really important to me because I got embarrassed a lot when people gave you something and they let you know they gave you something and then they call it out a few times when they meet you. Oh, you're still wearing the shoes, so they're still really good, aren't they? 
Oh. And you think like, yo, really in front of my friends? In front of the other people, they didn't need to know. Mm. But I know these people maybe didn't know and they just wanted to have a conversation. Well, they want to feel good about themselves, mate. That's, that could have been, that could have yeah. been. But for me was, I've learned from those lessons and I never wanted to do that to another human being. So for me, the important was, when I give something, I'll make sure you don't even know. So when we would do stuff, so probably you maybe see it now, when we did stuff, we would do raffles. And I wanted to make sure which kid gets what ticket to make sure that he's size five and I'll make sure he gets these new Nikes I just bought. <laughs> so we will go to the show, buy trainers, um, and we do like a raffle night. Um, or I knew like, you know, you didn't have the right clothes. Your clothes always falling down or they got rips or whatever. I'll be like, okay, I'm gonna go buy a tracksuit. And then I'll say, yo, I need your help today. Didn't need your help. I'll be like, I need your help. I need you to stand reception, sign people in. You stand at, stand at reception for 20 minutes. I'm like, oh, thank you. You can go to class now. They go to class, do the class. When they walk down, you know what? I just want to say thank you for helping me out today. You know what? I've got a little gift for you and give them something. So I always wanted to make sure people felt they found it. They did something. And it wasn't just give them in a way of like, I know that you're poor. And I'm going to tell you that you're poor. Mm. It was kind of like, it's a gift. And it's kind of like out of luck, you were there in the right place, right time. Mm. You did the right thing and you got given something. And for me, it was that beautiful moment you can create that magic. And I was very lucky. I had my wife, my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law, her family who really supported me. So whenever I had somebody in need, I could always lean on and say, guys, could you chip in for me? I've got this kid. And, and people always lent in and family really helped me. So I was really lucky and blessed that I had those people around me to support me in these magical moments. To be able to create that magic for that kid, I know what that did. I know what that did. Yeah, it's unbelievable, man. Even just hearing some of those examples just breaks my heart a little bit. Oh, no, I was just thinking that. I was just thinking yeah. about and the, yeah, the the impact you would have had on those kids' lives is is you know unmeasurable. Yeah, I mean, for Maybe me, it's beautiful because right now you've got these kids and the adults, mm -hmm. and sometimes they bring the kids down to Street Factory. Mm -hmm. Like, look, look at me, Toby. I'm married. I got a kid, and and you think, wow.